We left off 88. We speak about composites, that the world is made up of different items, things, and even the everything itself is a composite because it's made up of the four base, base, basic elements, right, which you discussed earlier. There's fire, water, wind, and earth. Since all things are comprised of the base elements and their composites through their combinations, this all didn't come about by itself. Who combined them? Or the different elements within it to be? Give me an example. I mean, people, you speak to them. People are so jaded in certain concepts, and therefore they say, you know, Big Bang Theory. That's how things came about. Forget about the question, but who, who caused the matter that as a result of the Big Bang existence came into, even without, without that? The, a woman cannot conceive. There was a case. I knew a person who was married for 21 years, and they, they didn't have children. And there's a schooler that if you adopt a child, it's a school to have a child. So they decided, they realized that if they're married 21 years, they're going to adopt a child. It's even now or never. The clock is ticking. So they adopted a child, a Jewish child from Israel. And um, she went for, an, for her yearly appointment with her gynecologist. She says, you know something, I haven't taken a blood test to check for this particular thing. I'm going to check it. And he realizes that her iodine level was slightly off, it's very slight. He says, you know something? I think you're, you have a deficiency. I'm going to give you some uh, supplement for the iodine. She conceived immediately. The small degree of deficiency in iodine made a difference whether she could conceive or not. You understand? This came about. The Big Bang. Everything exactly. The body functions where? Because it happened this way. You understand? This is just arbitrary, random. That's how things happen. No, nature is God. Right? Okay? Things don't happen by themselves. And especially with the, the, the exactness and the precision and the balance. You know, it's interesting. The, the Orachim HaKadosh writes in one location. What is a human being made of? What is... A uh, human being is also a composite. No, no. We have the physicality, then we have the neshama. The soul is totally spiritual. How do you attach something which is totally spiritual and infuse it in the body and somehow they interact a and there, I there is a connection between the two of them? How does it work? So the Ramchal, the Orachim HaKadosh says that just as you cannot combine fire to water to attach the soul to the body is more difficult than having fire and water coexist so why do they coexist and more they're they're intertwined, intermingled with one another because god the creator should be right we have by you by by right what was paro what was he amazed all the plagues they always say they were just uh, a magnification of whatever. The water turns to blood. Now blood is blood. So blood is nature. But what are fire and water coexisting? That's impossible. So what does Paro say? Hashem atzadak nivami arishoyim. Now he's really, now he op opens his eyes. Can't be. How do you have two things which are contradictory? How do they, could they coexist? The soul and the Shem body more than coexisting, functioning as one, this is beyond that. So how does it happen? God decrees it should happen. Of course, the laws of nature. You know, the Gemara, we had the Gemara in Tainus, Rabbi Hanina Medosa. Rabbi Hanina Medosa, his, his daughter, it was Arab Shabbos, and he saw his daughter was a little melancholy. He says, what's the problem? She says, you know, I realize I have oil, olive oil for Shabbos. And she took the wick and put it into a jug of vinegar. So we're not going to have light. So he says, 
just as God decrees that oil should burn, Hashem could decree that vinegar should burn. He says, why don't you try it? She lights it. That Shabbos, they may have done the burn on that candle. It burnt longer than an oil candle. So why, what is nature? Why is something flammable or something not flammable? Because God decrees this is what it is. That's, that's all what it's all about. So whatever Hashem decrees, that's what it is. So it's entered into our understanding, it's been clarified and verified in our souls. So who attached them? Who created these combinations? It's something outside of them. And what connected them. And all these various elements that they were combined. It's something they had no cho- choice but to be combined. It's the Creator who perfected their attachment and their union. You know, it's interesting. The Gemara tells us in Nido, Cleopatra, you know, she was, she was amazed at certain things. It always had to do with something which was sexual. Cleopatra. The Gemara Nida says that she was amazed. How is it possible that you have this nearly colorless fluid causing the ovum to, uh, to uh, fertilize and then all of a sudden the human being is born. Limbs, body, you have the skin, you have the bones, you have that, you have the eyes, you have color, you have sk- and you have hair. This beautiful entity. How's it possible? She was, that's what she was amazed at. We'll have more later in Question she asked one of the, I think, Rabbi Gamliel, what's going to be if a person is buried when he's go- going to be resurrected? Is he going to be resurrected naked or is he going to be resurrected clothed? That, that was a question she asked. Th- this, this question bothered Cleopatra. So he said to her, when you put a kernel of wheat in the ground and it germinates and grows into a into a stalk, into a sheep. You have the kernel, and it has many husks. So you see something that goes into the ground un- uncovered, comes with multiple coverings on it. The husks, identically, although the person is wet, he will rise, he'll be clothed. That's what he answered her. But these, these are the issues which bothered her. Okay. One's lifetime. Every person has his own. How many? How many? How long is the person going to live? That will determine how long the neshama is going to be in the body. Everybody dies eventually. Well, we're going to th- at the time of conception, the neshama goes into the into the child. From the time of conception and the whole growth development, the neshama is continuously with 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 the, that development. Every child, every 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 human being. So it's individual. Of course. We have to see it. I'm gonna have to see what you do. You have to come tomorrow. See that? Okay. Everything's simple. It's instantaneous. That's why. Birth is nine months. There's a gestation period. Resurrection is there's no there's no time. It's it's in, in, it's instantaneous. Mm-hmm. But it has to come back together, and the body has to be recreated. It's dust. It's going from dust into a u- new human being. What's so difficult? It's instantaneous. How did God create Adam originally? They're both. It's all. God said. God said there should be light, and there was light. How did it happen? God said there should be light. That's how it happened. Okay.